By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Deventer, the Netherlands, at the Knights of Thorn, the 10th edition already. And we are going to look at a round 4 match between Richard and Gijsbert. Richard is playing a deck called Atok Dragon. Yes, you've heard it correctly, Atok Dragon. It's got Atoks and Achievement Dragons. It's awesome. And he's taking on Gijsbert, who's playing with a black-green deck. Also, more, more mono-green, but it has that little black splash, a deck that has been doing quite well in tournaments lately. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Now, before I start with the deck tech section of this video, because I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to check out the match first, maybe go back to the deck text later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games, so click on there, and it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find mo more information about the tournament, the rule set, and also a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because yes, yes, I have my very own Patreon page. So if you want to sponsor the show, please visit patreon.com slash timmytalks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Richard, Atok Dragon. And here we see the deck of Richard. So I've called this Atok Dragon for very obvious reasons, right? He's playing three Atoks and a full playset. I love it of Shivan Dragons. And of course, because he's playing with Atox, there are a lot of artifacts in the deck as well. And I just always love it when players do something else, you know? Normally when people play Atok, it's usually with red, uh, with artifacts, and they go the route of Black Vice, Ankh of Mishra. And rightfully so, don't get me wrong, that's a very strong combination, but I just get excited when I see something else. In this case, we see the Mana Vault in combination with the Atok, which works fine, right? Mana Vault can hurt you, it can even kill you, but if you've got the Atok, you can sack it to that and even give the Atok a bonus. And before you do that, of course, you're going to use that Mana Vault. And then for what are you going to use it? What is cooler than casting Shivan Dragons? Maybe Mahamoti Jin, maybe, but I'm biased. <laughs> but Shivan, man, that's such a cool creature to cast, and he's got four in his deck, so that's going to be fun. He also has another creature that's a six drop, that is a Triskelion. Triskelion, again, works really well with the Atok, because when you take the counters off, you can feed it to the Atok, and it kind of fits that red vibe very well, because it's also a way to deal direct damage, right? Basically, in, in, in Trike is a very expensive lightning bolt that you can divide, right? So it's it's as we know now a super good card and again interesting here he hasn't chosen to go full out with the with the uh, Triskelion he's not like I'm gonna play for example uh, copy artifacts to copy my trike no 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 he's like you know I'm playing Shivan and Triskelion I can cast them early with my mana rocks and of course with the mana vaults I can feed those later to my Atok and Atok looks very strong here he also has uh, a lot of X spells, right? Two disintegrates and a fireball. Normally in these decks you maybe see one fireball, but he's chosen to go for three uh, in total. So that's uh, that's pretty, you know, that's that's a clear choice that he's made. That's my point, I guess. He's also playing, of course, with four lightning bolts. Uh, he's got a wheel of fortune, a balance, playing with two disenchants, which which I think is important because the problem sometimes with these decks is you run into uh, enchantments like a moat that you cannot get rid of. Although you can fly over the moat with the Shivan, I guess. Um, you know, an Abyss, maybe that's a better example with the Shivans, you can disenchant it. It's sometimes hard when you're only playing red and have that uh, blue splash to deal with enchantments. So it's really good to have that disenchant here. And of course, after sideboarding, if your opponent plays a COP red, you can also deal with that with the disenchant. So I really understand that little white splash here in the deck. And then, yeah, I know, we've got, you know, we've got our black splash, we've got the Demonic Tutor and the Mind Twist. Yeah, I know, I understand. And then we have, of course, our, our Blue Splash, the Time Walk, the Time Twister, and the Ancestral Recall. That's actually another thing I like about this deck is to draw sevens, Wheel of Fortune and the Time Twister. Yes, they are also really good in a deck with Burn, like with all the bolts, but it's also just fun. You know, it's fun to play a game where someone goes, you know what, let's Twister and let's see what's going to happen. I like that. Uh, even though in these decks, it's probably better for the shard, right, than for the opponent. But overall, this deck is looking very strong. And, I mean, I can't wait to just see these Shivan Dragons in action. I'm really looking forward to it. And here we see the deck of Gijsbert. So it is green and it's got black in it as well. And that really reminds me of the deck of Dave Firth Bard, who's been very successful with his mono green brews. And he started adding a little bit of black every single time. Like Terror seemed to be a really good inclusion. 
um, but we're seeing it here main and not just in the sideboard so that's a little difference I guess um, and also uh, we've seen it of course at the often truck of number four where a similar deck like this actually made it to the finals and I was surprised but not surprised because just mono green has been doing quite well and this black splash has proven to be quite good so it's going to be interesting I think when I'm looking at this deck is let's just talk about what this deck wants to do right it's basically mono green stompy you have so many one drops in here it's insane you've got elves of deep shadow four of you've got uh three scavenger folks you've got four uh pixies you've got four lanawer elves so they're all flying they're all sorry they're all one one creatures for one green mana that's what i'm trying to say so he's got tons of one drops with this deck if you don't have a one drop in your opening hand you've got a serious uh, problem right so i'm expecting geisberg to be super aggressive from the start of the game and then of course he's also playing with ice storm to try to slow down his opponent he's playing with hurricane kind of as a finisher i guess and to keep cards in hand he's got a single sylvan library in his deck as well um so like i said he's playing some black cards main that's something that you don't see in a lot of these decks usually they're in the sideboard or maybe they play demonic tutor but in this case you see two terrors the mind twist and the demonic tutor here in the main 60 of geispert so that's quite interesting we also see two mazes of if and I always like that because I actually think that Maze of If is almost better as an offensive card than as a defensive card. I mean, people used to play it as only a defensive card, but there's so many things you can do in combat. Let's say you've got two one ones and your opponent has a 2-2 blocker. You couldn't attack without the Maze. When you have a Maze, you can just attack with both. Whoever the 2-2 blocks, you take it out of combat with the Maze and you don't lose a thing, right? You can just attack again the next turn. It's ideal. Now, obviously, with so many one ones, Pendlehaven is going to have a key role in his deck and that's why Geisbert is playing three Pendle Havens even though of course they're legendary lands so you can never have more than two into play. One of the tricks that you can do though with Pendle Haven is tap your Pendle Haven, bump one of your creatures, one of your one ones, then play your Pendle Haven from your hand and your tap Pendle Haven will be destroyed and you can pump another creature with your new Pendle Haven because of course lands don't have summoning sickness. So that's kind of like a, a neat little trick uh, that you can do. Maybe we're going to see that in this uh, in this match here today um i do think if i have to be honest when i'm looking at both of the decks i think it's going to be really tough for geisbert and the reason i say that is because of all that direct damage the bolts destroy almost everything but also because of the acceleration in richard's deck right if he can get those mana vaults out and the moxen and stuff then he can like get a triskelion out quite early i think and a trike is like devastating for this deck it helps a little bit if Geisbert can kind of manage to get like a Pendlehaven on board because then the tri can only kill one creature, I guess, you know, but a Pendlehaven, or, or sorry, Triskelion is a big problem for these decks and Richard has so much ramp and I think for Geisbert it's all about speed, right? He's got to go faster, but really, really fast uh, compared to, uh, to Richard. He does, of course, also play with Crumble's main and the Ice Storm so he can kind of attack the mana base of Richard. There, there are possibilities. Maybe I'm underestimating the list, you know, because it had really good results in the past. So who am I? But just when looking at a first glance, I'm like, ooh, this could be difficult for Geisbert. Anyway, let me know your opinion in the comments below. What do you think about this matchup? And uh, we've looked at the deck of Richard. We've looked at the deck of Geisbert. So that only means one thing. We are ready to go to the match. Game number one of round number four at the Knights of Thorn here. We've got Richard on the left with his uh, Atok Dragon deck taking on Geisbert. He's sitting on the right and he's playing a mono green with that black splash. They've called it black green aggro. Look at him go here. He's got a lot of one drops starting with an Elves of Deep Shadow. And are we going to see a bolt? There's a bolt. I think if you're Geisbert, it's not really that big of a deal. He's got so many one drops here. And I think the better news here, and Richard took a mulligan, by the way. It's going quite quick, but he took a mulligan, so he's down a card. Ooh, strip mine. Could consider stripping. Yeah, just slow him down as much as you can. That's what the doctors ordered. There's a scavenger, folks, so he can use that to maybe uh, destroy an artifact. Richard's deck, of course, full of mana vaults. There's the attack with the scavenger. There's another 1-1. One, one. The Lana Rails, no land drop, though, but the Lana Rails, he can tap for mana. There's an Atok, yeah, so that's a little bit annoying because of that two toughness. So that's kind of a little mini wall that he's got to find a solution for. And now it would be really nice if he can drop a land and maybe an Ice Storm, for example. Or, of course, get a Pendle, Pendle Haven. That would be ideal. There's the attack. Interesting. So it looks like he's attacking with the Scavenger Folk. Are we going to see... We're going to see a giant growth here. So killing the Atok. And then there is a 1-1 a flyer to Scrip Sprites. 
in the past here. So let's see what the V-Shirt can do. There's the Volcanic Island. There's an Ancestral Recall. So drawing three more cards. That's always good. And of course, uh, a bit annoying if you're the, uh, the green player because you don't have access to that kind of power. There's the Atok. And of course, he can uh, fly over with the script sprites. But the other two creatures are kind of grounded at the moment. Unless, of course, Geisbert has another Giant Grove in hand or wants to bluff a Giant Grove. Just attacking for one here. And okay, there's an Argovian Pixies. So Argovian Pixies, a 2-1 creature that can uh, work really well against artifacts because all damage dealt with by artifacts is reduced to zero. So that's quite nice. Here we see the... Uh, Black Lotus cracking the Lotus. Are we going to see a big creature? Are we going to see a Shivan Dragon? Remember, four in his deck. And, oh, nope. But this is actually worse here for Geisbert. I mean, this is going to mow everything down. Taking care of all those one drops. Yeah, this is this is brutal for Geisbert, you know. And this is where Pendlehaven is so important, you know, when you're facing a Triskelion. Yeah, this is really difficult now for Geisbert. Only managed to deal like two damage in the early part of the game. I guess we're now kind of in mid game, but look at the board state. Geisbert just passing. Oh, this is so bad. Really stuck. Just one land, and the uh, Argovian Pixies is looking very bleak for him. I'm expecting an attack here with the Atok or perhaps a Shivan. Looks like there's the attack. I mean, you got to take the damage, right? Okay, he is going to block. That surprises me a little. I mean, it is putting Richard in a little bit of a pickle, you know, what to do. But I, I guess I would sack the Triskelion. Of course, I don't know what he's got in hand. Could also consider sacking the Lotus. Yeah, I mean, the Mox, I mean, because he's got more than enough mana sources. Although, does he? Does he? Because you want to have six mana sources for the Triskelion. Exactly. I would go for the Trike, I think. But I guess he doesn't agree. And of course, uh, ooh, look at that. A giant growth. So in response, another sack. So that means the Atok survives, but Richard had to sack both of his artifacts here. And two cards in hand here for uh, for Richard, I believe. And the reason I thought that maybe it's better to keep the Mox Jet is because he's playing with N4 Triskelions, N4 Sheevans, of course, and they both have a casting cost of 6. But of course, I don't know what cards are in the hand here of Richard. Perhaps he's going to play a draw 7 now. Which is fun, but also risky, because kind of you're helping Geisbert back into the game. Then again, I mean, you're probably going to draw so many good things. Yep, there we go. Time Twister, baby. I love it. I love seeing Time Twister. I love seeing Wheel of Fortune. It's just a lot of fun. I mean, both players drawing a fresh a fresh 7. And I think it's really good for Richard, because yes, you're giving Geisbert a completely new hand. But I mean, he's only got one land. That's the issue here for Geisbert. And... I feel like Richard it doesn't have it in the back yet, but almost. I would say for like 80%. Because, I mean, his life total is high. He's got a lot of lands. He's now probably going to draw into Mana Volts and Moxen and stuff. He can deploy another Trike. Maybe not this turn, but then next turn. Or a Sheevan Dragon. And that's huge. That's a huge problem for um, for Geisbert. You know, like Mono Green doesn't like to deal with that. And that's, of course, why the Black Splash is so good. Because it gives you access to a Terror, for example. And, of course, a Terror on a Sheevan would be ideal. So we'll have to see. If Geisbert is really lucky and Richard is unlucky, then Geisbert can definitely like still take the take this game here. But let's first see what's going to happen. It's still Richard's turn. Okay, here we can see the hand. Oh, there's no land in there. Oh, that is tough. That is tough. Yeah, we can't really see it, Richard, but thank you for trying. I saw a fireball and a mox there. The Mox Pearl is nice, I guess, but that is tough for Geisbert. No lands. Look at that, a pass. Okay, so that's at least good news for uh, for Geisbert. I mean, it would have been worse if it would see like a Mox and a Mana Volt and then, like a big creature, but we're not seeing that. There are the script sprites, 1 1 flyer. But it would be so nice if you could just find one of his three Pendle Havens, you know, play the script sprites, play the Pendle Haven, play another. Oh, Library of Alexandria. That's just disgusting, Richard. That is disgusting. Yeah, there we go. And here we go. Geisbert scooping up saying, you've got this. This is, there's no way I'm going to get back from this. And uh, I guess he's right. 
I still always like it to kind of see it end, but then again, in these tournament matches, remember, you only have 50 minutes, so sometimes it's better, if you're losing, to just go to the sideboards and uh, focus on the next game. Also, you don't want to give your opponent too much information, although it's quite clear here what the green deck uh, wants to do. But yeah, very unfortunate for you, Geisberg, that you know you just couldn't find any more lands because usually these almost mono colored decks are super consistent and and because you only play one color of course you got the modest black splash it's usually super reliable and you play with a lot of mana dorks as well so just a lot of bad luck for you in game one let's hope it goes better in game number two game number two here we go so one game up for richard here that means geisbert is on the play let's see if these players are going to keep their hands or perhaps take a mulligan. Remember, remember, uh, Richard took a mulligan in uh, in game number one, and he's got a lot of like he's got the wheel, he's got the recall, ancestral recall, he's got the uh, the time twister. So I mean, with his deck, it's kind of easier, I guess, to take a to take a, a mulligan. Also, also, he's got of course the uh, the balance and the mind twist. Okay, there's the hand of Geisbert. It's not going to keep it. It was a little bit too quick to kind of see what he had in hand there. I thought I saw a strip mine of forest, but I guess it was really bad. So Geisbert here taking a mulligan, mm, that is not great. He is on the play, which is great for him. I mean, he wants to go really fast. But taking this mulligan is not ideal, of course. I mean, it's, it's hard enough without a mulligan. So drawing seven. Let's see what card. He's got to put a card away, of course. He's a little bit uh, contemplating on that. Showing it to us. There's the Ice Storm going to the bottom. Let's see what he can do. Starting with a Bayou into a Scavenger Folk. There's also a Turn 1 player. Oh, yeah, there's the Bolt. I mean, those Bolts are doing work. I think Richard really knows his position in this matchup. There's a strip mine again. There's a lot of our elves. So, I mean, if you're Richard, you're really focused on just not taking too much damage in the early game, and then you'll probably run away with it in the later game, mid game, late game. There's the Atok, which is actually quite good because it's just a 1 2. You know, just being a 1 2, and then Geisbert really needs, like, the Pendlehaven. Okay, there we see the Terror from the side, and also a Scripps Sprites. So, that's pretty good news. But what I wanted to say is, I mean, he really needs that Pendlehaven. It's so key for his deck, and he didn't see it at all in game one, and also now it's not showing up. So I hope for Geisberg, really, that he can maybe find it in the next uh, one or two turns. There is another A talk and a pass. Let's see if he has perhaps another Terror. Although I'm not even sure if you want to use it at this point. There's the attack. And this is where maybe if you would have played game one a little bit longer, perhaps then you would have seen the Sheevan. And you know that the Terrace, of course, is also really important to keep for the Sheevan. So only one card left in hand. Although I guess, I mean, it's an aggressive deck, so you got to play your Terrace aggressively as well. You cannot wait for like, oh, maybe he's going to play a Sheevan in turn six. Like, <laughs> that would be kind of silly as well. So I guess, I guess uh, he, he, what he did was the right thing to do. Anyway, still only one land, by the way, for Geisbert. He does have, of course, two Lana Elves. He's going to attack her with his two Flyers, so flying over the Atox. Probably going to put the Richard. No, is he going to do something against it? Oh, there's a Terror from his sideboard. Okay, so both players boarded in extra Terrors, I guess. The Richard now on 18. There's a Sylvan. This is really good also because Geisbert is still on 20, so he can start using the Sylvan quite aggressively. Or are we going to see a Disenchant? Oh, yeah, there's a Disenchant. Oh, and there's a Bolt. My, 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 my. Yeah, the deck is looking really, really strong of, uh, of Richard here. Just so many answers. I mean, white gives you Disenchant, red gives you Bolts. What more can you ask for, really? It's just perfect against this deck here. There's a Forest and just a Pass. Would have been nice to see, for example, a spitting slug on the side of Geisbert, but doesn't have one. And now the hand's empty of Richard. Okay, this is not too bad, you know. I mean, Richard's got a lot of lands, a mox, and just a single Atok. So this is not too bad. Could be worse. Two cards in hand for Geisbert. I really wonder what they are. Just a pass here by Richard. So, I mean, Geisbert needs a little bit of luck here, you know. 
exactly. Put some pressure on. Mistress Factory could maybe do something in the long run. Two cards in hand still for him. One card in hand for Disha. It's going to draw card number two. Another, well, Factory not ideal, but also not the worst. I mean, imagine he top decks a uh, Triskelion. That would be uh, almost end the end of the game in the match. Okay, there's a Scavenger Folk. So this is all quite nice. But I mean, how long can you count on Richard like not really finding anything from top of his deck? And look at that. The moment I say it, he's found something. Earthquake for one. That is horrible. That is horrible. So much value here. That Earthquake for one did a lot of business. Killed three creatures on the side of Gijsberg. Just, just, just insane. He's going to untap the forest here. And yeah, I'm really, of course, rooting here for Gijsbert, hoping he can make it into a 1-1, and we go to a game three, but it's looking really bad for him. It's just a really bad matchup, I feel. And here we see Richard tapping three. Okay, we're all going to get a wheel of... I like this, you know, I like it. I think it's cool. And we're going to see a crumble here. And what else are we going to see? And we're going to see a Terror on the Atok. So, Gijsbert was kind of keeping the Terror in hand there for the bigger creature threats. And look at that. He's going to lose an Ice Storm. But, I mean, this was pretty good for Gijsbert, right? He's refilling his hand. He was able to play the two instants, get some value out of it. And, of course, uh, Richard is looking for those Triskelions, uh, looking, for, uh, looking for the Sheevan Dragons. And he's going to play out a Volcanic Island. We kind of can peek a little bit into his hand. I believe I saw a Disintegrate there in the City of Brass. Hard to see the rest, though. He's going to tap. He's going to make it into a 2. Two. Okay, he's going to attack for 2. That's not a problem here. Geisbert, of course, was still on a 19. So dropping here to 17. There's an Ancestral Recall, yeah. In the upkeep, of course, of Geisbert. Oh, well, what can you do? There's another Bayou. So he could now consider attacking for two. It is risky, of course, that uh, it's going to be hit by a Disenchant or a Bolt. But maybe he's got better options. Going to tap four. What are we going to see for four? Okay, there's an Argovian Pixies, a Scrip Sprites, and a Lana Realms. Okay, so this is quite nice. Will he be able to put some pressure on? Again, I'm really worried about Terskelion. I mean, if he just can find one trike, he can kill that whole board. And I mean, he's got four. He hasn't played a single one. Maybe I'm being a pessimist, but keeping my fingers crossed here. No offense to you, Richard, but I just I just want it to be a 1-1. One, one. I want to see this green deck shine. Oh, another Earthquake. So these cards are coming from the sideboard. Man, I mean, I guess a trike would be worse, I guess. But this is almost as bad. Oh, there's a Bolt. Of course, just kill everything in plain sight. You monster. Yep, strip mine. There we go. Older creature threats gone. And then, of course, attacking with his own man land. Guys, by dropping to 14. I mean, I hope, Richard, that after this game, you got a beer uh, for your opponent here. You know, that's the least you can do. There's another factory. So he can now swing for three. Or does he have a better option? I still hope to see Sheev and Dragons. Going to tap six. Are we going to see Sheevan Dragon? No, another Triskelion. Maybe he boarded out the Sheevans because of the terrors. I hope not. Yeah, if you're Gijsbert, you're like, okay, whatever. This is just a formality now. Finding a forest. Yeah, really tough here for, uh, for Gijsbert, who's actually been doing quite well at this tournament, by the way. I mean, the deck is really performing, but like I said, this is just a really bad matchup for him. And here we see the Mind Twist for three. And usually that's huge, right? When you do a Mind Twist for three, it's huge. You're like, okay, now I can probably win the game, but in the position he is in, yeah, it doesn't mean a lot. He's got he's to get rid of the Triskelion first, I feel, before he can start casting creatures again. There's the attack. There's the pump. So this is a lot of damage. Nine damage, I believe. 
And then he can take the counters off, win the game. Yeah, because he was on 12, who we'll dropped to three, then take the counters off and, uh, and win it here. Wow. So another 2-0 victory here at the Knight of Thorn. And this was round number four. Now, if you don't want to, of course, congratulations. Sorry, congratulations, Richard, for winning. Beautiful deck. But I haven't seen a single Sheevan, so I'm a little, uh, I'm not very happy with you here. But um, anyway, well done. And, and Geisbert, as, as I said, his deck is doing quite well at this event as well. He might still make it into, into the top eight, I believe. Anyway, this was uh, match number four from round number four of the Knights of Thorn. Now, I'll be back again next week with more action from this tournament. So if you don't want to miss a thing, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and now that you've done that, before you go away, please take a moment to share, comment, and like this video. All these things are completely free and really help the channel move forward. So uh, please support the show. Talking about supporting the show, you can also become a member of the Timmy Talks Patreon page. You can, be you can become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for more information. It already starts for just $1, and for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks uh, uh, Patreon Discord. And you can also join in on the uh, online events that they organize every every now and then. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!